Welcome to this pre-lab video. In this video, we will go over the introduction and some of the things to look out for in the chemistry of sulfur lab, uh, which is coming up here soon. So <clears throat> starting here in lab archives, we see that we've got the chemistry of sulfur here. And really what this lab is focusing on, this is a descriptive lab as opposed to a calculation lab. So what we are going to do is we are going to observe a number of different things about sulfur. And we're going to look at um, kind of how those things change and what kinds of chemical reactions sulfur ends up being able to do. So that's what we're going after here. And so the introduction here kind of talks about some of the different forms of sulfur that exist. And all those different forms of sulfur are known as allotropes. So at their core, they're all sulfur atoms that are bonded together. They just happen to be bonded together in different ways. And so we will end up looking at a couple of different forms of sulfur, something called the orthorhombic or just plain old rhombic form, the monoclinic form, uh, which has more of a needle-like appearance. And then we'll actually do some reaction um, manipulation using heat to do lambda and mu sulfur, um, which are there as well. So here are some pictures of the two different types that we're going to be investigating. So the orthorhombic here on the left, we can see what kind of distinguishes it is it's got more of a, rhom a rhombus kind of shaped face. These are big, bulky kinds of crystals and their faces can have anywhere from like a triangular kind of appearance like we see here or if we get a good look at it on side we can actually see the faces almost being more like rhombuses. On the other side we've got the monoclinic sulfur. The monoclinic is you know from a molecular standpoint we're talking about tube-like kinds of crystals, very thin faces. But to us, we're going to see them more like needles. So very, very needle-like kind of appearance. And so that's really the difference between the two of them. And we are going to use microscopes in the first part of the procedure to help us to distinguish between the monoclinic and the rhombic forms as we investigate here further. So as we look into the procedure here, the first part of this, part A, is all about the allotropes. And so we are going to look at sulfur that occurs naturally, and we're going to investigate what that looks like. We're gonna put it under microscope and take a good look at the crystals themselves. We're gonna do a procedure where we turn natural sulfur into what's called lambda sulfur, um, which is going to change it. Um, from one form to the other. And then we're going to really just heat the junk out of it here in part three to turn it into mu sulfur. And this mu sulfur will end up having very different kinds of properties than the monoclinic or the rhombic for that matter. The latter parts of this lab are just looking at different kinds of compounds that sulfur can make and how to kind of differentiate them. So um, part one here, we made a metallic sulfide a couple of weeks ago when we did the empirical formula of a copper sulfide. In this case, we're gonna make an iron sulfide. We're not gonna actually find the chemical formula for it, but we are going to use this to create a solid from which we can make hydrogen sulfide gas. And we get an idea of what that looks like, what that smells like, what kinds of properties it has. In part C, we will make sulfur dioxide using uh, sodium sulfite. And so we'll get some idea of the properties of that. One word of warning as we do that, the sulfur dioxide that is created is extremely pungent. Um, and so we're gonna be very careful when we go about testing that and trying to observe its odor. And then lastly, we're gonna do a couple of experiments here about sulfuric acid, where we react with some organic materials in the form of water, 
well, water's not organic, but um, we're gonna react it with water and some carbon-based compounds like sugar and paper. And then we're gonna react it with metals and try to figure out what chemical reaction actually took place. So, and that kind of gets us into the data that we're gonna take and the analysis that we're going to do. But let's talk about the pre-lab. In the pre-lab and in the post-lab, we are going to see that there are some questions here about Lewis structures. One of the things that we've been learning in lecture has been the creation of Lewis structures and the drawing of molecules and ions using that particular format. We're gonna give you an opportunity to practice that a little bit more here as well. And so in the pre-lab, we have a couple of questions about just some basic terms. Each of these terms you can get out of the introduction. And then for parts two and three, you can do the drawings of S8, um, which is known as crown sulfur. This S8 is an eight membered ring. So you are going to draw sulfur as an eight membered ring. Just by bonding together all of the sulfur atoms with each other. And then all you need to figure out is you know, how many lone pairs there are and where to, how to distribute them. And then kind of the same thing for sulfur dioxide. Now in both cases, what you're being asked to do is to take a picture of it and insert it. The way to do that is if you have it saved as a picture file, what you can do is in the rich text editor, you can go to this part here, insert the image, and you can take that image, drop it in from the file. And so long as you pick something that is an image, let's just take one of these and download it. Now you should be able to copy and paste as well. So if you have it, if you did it on your computer and you save it, you can hit do copy and paste to get your um, pictures in there as well. If you have it saved to the notebook, uh, saved somewhere else to my documents. So put that in my documents folder here, hit save. Now, if I go to my documents area, here's my image. I can now drag it and move it to where it needs to go. Drag it and drop in there, and it'll put it in just like that. Now, if you can't get this particular thing to work, that's okay. Um, you can always just take your pictures or your PDFs, however you chose to save it, add it as an attachment, save the whole thing here, drop it in, you'll be just fine. So that's all for this particular lab. It's a relatively short pre-lab because, well, it's a relatively straightforward experiment that we're doing on Thursday this week. So with that being said, have a great day and I'll see you next time.